Hello there, folks. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Seasons, which is one of our favorite games. You can tell because it's all beat up. We have some duct tape, we have some 3D printed reinforcements. Uh, this game has been through a lot over the years, which really goes to show that we do love this game. So, Seasons is two to four players, and it takes about one to two hours, but it's heavily dependent on who you're playing with, and also the number of players. So, a two-person game could take 50 minutes. A four-person game could take... could take three hours, <laughs> depending on the room. So, the concept of Seasons is you are wizards in some sort of wizard Olympics. <laughs> and you're trying to show off your best spells. And the course of the competition will take place over the course of three years. And so, three times you'll go through each of the seasons where your abilities may act a little bit differently depending on the season. So, <laughs> since we like this game, we have a lot of 3D printed components for it. Um, and I do have a couple of the, the expansions, so this helps us fit everything into one little box. So here, you can see this is a calendar, 1 through 12, all four seasons, and you'll track your progress around this calendar three times, and then at the end of that three years, whoever has the most prestige points will win the game. So, the points come from a couple different things which we will get into, but mainly it will be crystals which are tracked on this crystal tracker, and then points will also come from the cards that we play. The bulk of the game, the bulk of the strategy is in how you choose to play your cards, what cards you select, and so I'll start the instructions by giving you an overview of the card layout. So the top left of the card, that is the number of points that it is worth at the end of the game. This one is zero points. This one is 10. These are 10 points. So if you have them played out in front of you at the end of the game, that is how much they will be worth. In the center here, you'll see the cost of the card. So this one is 3 leaf. That's the cost. This one is to crystals, etc. We'll get into the resources soon, don't worry. <laughs> There's a lot to get through, as you can probably tell by however long this video ends up being. Under that is a description for the card, and every single card has a pretty detailed description of the actions and how you'll be using them. You'll also see some of the cards are purple, and some of the cards are orange. Um, it's the color of the 
number in the top left. The purple cards are considered magic items, and the orange cards are considered familiars. On the bottom left of the card, there will be a symbol, and that is the type of action of this card. So, the first symbol you'll see is just a down arrow, and that means that you do the action when you purchase the card. So, take it from your hand, buy it, and put it down on the table. Um, so, for example, if I purchase this with one fire, then I would immediately do the action as stated on the card. The second type of action is a little, like, infinity circle arrow, and that is an action that applies all of the time. Um, so whenever the condition applies on the card, you will execute it. So this one says, gain three crystals whenever you summon a power card. The last symbol, which is the most complex, I guess, is this little gear symbol. And that means that once each turn, if you have a card played once each turn, you can choose if you want to use this card or so, if you do want to use the card, you will turn it 90 degrees to show, the, show that you've used it. Um, do whatever the action is. Uh, but if you don't want to use the card this turn, that is totally alright. So, those are the three different types of action. To really get into the game, I'm going to set it up real quick. seasons is there's so many cards, especially with the expansion. So, this is just about a third of the cards, but trust me, you won't need all of them in a game. And then here we have the season wheel, <laughs> um, some main board in the middle, and along the outside, and the outside is where you will track the passage of the months and the passage of the years here in the center. So each time you pass 12, you'll go to the next year until you get to the end of year 3. 
also on this wheel is the rules for transmutation. So transmutation means selling any energy tokens you may have and getting crystals for them. So crystals each are worth one victory point at the end of the game and you could theoretically sell a couple of your energy tokens in exchange for some more crystals. So that's what transmutation is. Um, but since the game is called Seasons, the going rate of the energy changes based on the season. So we're currently in winter. If you're selling this fire token at winter, you would look at where the fire is. It's on the second concentric circle and you can see it's two crystals next to the fire. That means selling this will get you two crystals. And then this earth is currently on the third innermost concentric circle, which will get you three crystals. If it was water or feather, they would each just be one crystal. So each season there's different resources that are more or less common. And if it's less common on the dice for that season, then it'll be a higher uh, payout on the transmutation circle. Transmutation is a big part of the game, but you will only transmute on specific turns um, and we'll go over that later in the dice symbol section. If you are this far in the video, I'd love a little like or subscribe. Whatever works for you, that would make me so happy. So, we went over the season board. These are the energy tokens, of course. Place them wherever. This is the crystal board, so it's just a numerical tracker of the crystals that you have in the game. And then we will each have one of these little player boards. And this is where you will store your energy tokens as you get them. It also has a like, star tracker on here, and that is called your summoning gauge. Whatever number this is at, that is the number of cards that you can have played in your area. So if I was four cards currently and my summoning gauge is at four, I would not be able to play another card from my hand until I either increase my summoning gauge or if I get rid of one of these cards and then I would have space to play another card. The next thing on your player board are these little bonus actions. These um, you can only do three times in a game, throughout the whole game. And each time you choose an action to do, you will go up this tracker by one space and you can see they're worth negative points. So if I had used this ability a couple times, maybe this ability and that ability, I would be on this spot, which would mean I would get negative 12 points at the end of the game. I'll go through all those specific actions when we get to the turn structure. That is sort of the layout of the whole game. Season board, your personal boards, you'll have your cards as you play them, draw pile, crystals, uh, that's pretty much it. So now I will go into gameplay and Seasons has a prelude as they call it 
and that means that we'll start by selecting the cards that we will be using for most of the game. And this will be sort of a draft process. If you've played Seven Wonders or if you've played Planted, it's the same structure where you'll start with these nine cards, you'll pick one that you would like to keep, and then you'll pass the rest to the next person. You'll get <laughs> that smaller deck from the person next to you, pick one, pass on the next person, and it'll continue going around until you get the last card to the person to your left. So this stage is, even though it kind of feels like setup, is really a huge um, part of seasons. It's laying the foundation for your game and the strategies that you want to use. So, uh, even though this might not be all of the cards that you get for the whole game, it will be the vast, vast majority of the cards that you get to play for this game. So, this prelude is a lot of important big decisions and will sort of lay out the path before you for what strategies you will take in the rest of the game. Once you've selected your nine cards through this draft, you'll then divvy them up into three separate piles. So like I mentioned, seasons consists of three years, and so each year you'll have three cards added to your hand. So you'll start with your year one cards in your hand, and then once we get around to year two, you'll add these cards to your hand as well. And then we do have these little library tokens, Roman numeral 2 and 3, which we'll put on the second year and third year hands. And you can look at these cards at any point throughout the game if you're trying to remember how much they cost um, or what they do. Uh, you can always take a peek as needed. Now that we've selected our hands for the game, we will go into the normal turn structure of seasons. So I'll go over that now. We'll first start by rolling the dice, and the, you can see there are four different colors of dice according to the four different seasons. So, since we're starting the season in winter, I will take the blue dice to roll them. And the number of dice is based on the number of players that you have for the game. So, let's say this is a two-player game, you would have number of players plus one, three dice that I'd be rolling for this two-player game. These dice have a bunch of odd symbols, which I will go over shortly. Um, but in terms of the turn structure, you'll roll these dice, and then this is three options that you'll have to choose from for what you want to do that turn. So since I rolled the first player, I will choose which die I would like, and then you'll pass the dice without rolling them to the next player. They will choose which die they would like, and then the remaining die will be placed in the center. We'll deal with that at the end of the round. Then, starting again with the first player who rolls, they will perform their actions for their turn. So, there are a few different actions that you can do in your turn, and you can do any order, any combination, any amount 
of actions that you would like to. So you could get the resources and actions from your die. You can play a power card from your hand into your summoning gauge. You could activate a power card that you already have placed down. You can use the bonuses on the board, and you can possibly transmute. So, like I said, you can do any combination of actions if you want to transmute, play a couple cards, transmute a little bit more. It's really up to you, you know, just depending on what you have available to you. I'll start with describing how to resolve your dice, what the dice symbols mean. So, most of the symbols on the dice are element energies, and each of these will mean that you pick up a energy token depending on which symbol. So, it could be fire, feather, which is air, water, or earth, which is the leaves. So, for example, mine has two fire on it. That means I will take two fire energy tokens. The next symbol is a star, and that increases your summoning gauge by one. So, like I mentioned earlier, you can only have cards down according to the number on your summoning gauge. So by increasing your summoning gauge, you're increasing the number of cards you can have played at a given time. The next symbol that you might see on a die is a number. Um, so sometimes it's a six or a little number one or two at the top. And that will just be straight crystals. So this player has one on their die, so at the start of their turn, they would just get one crystal on the tracker. The next symbol is a card symbol. Here we go. And this means that on your turn, you can pick up a card, take a look at it, and decide whether you want to add it to your hand or to discard it. And then the last symbol on a die is this little circle thing, and that is the transmutation that we've been talking about. So, if you choose this die, you know, take whatever resources, etc., and on that turn, you can transmute however many times you would like to. So, those are all of the dice. Another thing you can do on your turn is activate a card. So, I mentioned earlier some cards have a um, little circle action or a gear action. And if you use that gear or if that circle condition applies, then you'll do the action. So this one says, in winter, all energy tokens in your reserve, that's here, are also treated as earth energy. And then the gear is, discard a magic item and receive three energy tokens. So if I wanted to, I could activate those abilities as one of the actions of my turn. The next thing you can do is use the bonus bonus actions on your board. And like I said, each time you use one, you'll move your token over one space, which means more negative points. And I'll go over what each of these bonus actions is. So the first one, you can trade two energy tokens that you have for any two other energy tokens. The second one is, regardless of the die, you can transmute this turn. So if you didn't get a transmute die that you wanted, you 
can get this to get a transmute for this turn, and it also gives you plus one crystal per energy transmuted. The next one is increase the summoning gauge by one. That one's pretty straightforward, and it's also the most used bonus action, at least in our games. The last one is a little bit tricky. If you chose a card die, if you have that available to you for this turn, then instead of picking up one card, you'll pick up two cards, and then from this, you'll pick one to keep and one to discard. Those are all of the bonus actions that you can take on your turn. The next thing you can do on your turn is play or summon a power card. So this will consist of paying whatever that price is. This is Waterly Fire, which I coincidentally have. And then I will play this into my summoning game. So, just as a reminder, before you play a card, you of course have to have the cost of the card, but you also need to double check your summoning gauge. Then, the other thing you can do on your turn is transmute if you have that die, and that works, like I said, you're essentially selling energy tokens in exchange for crystals. Once you've completed all of the actions that you would like to, then in clockwise order, the next person will complete their actions and so on. Once everyone is done, you'll do some round end steps. So first things first, we will check this die that was left in the center here. And the number of dots that's on the bottom of the die will designate the number of months that the timer will move forward. So in this case, I think it was one dot, so we'll move it forward one month, but it can go up to three dots, so you would move it forward three months. Also, some cards will have um, triggers at the end of the year or at the season change, so if you have those, then you'll want to do those actions. And then, of course, if you do complete a year, you pass the 12 mark, you'll take your next three cards and add them to your hand. And then for the next round, the first player will move clockwise, so this time the person <laughs> to my left will be rolling the dice and they'll be the first player. But that is sort of the turn structure, and you'll continue taking turns like this until you get all the way past the 12 of the third year. So you'll be able to sort of see this coming because someone will pick what the remaining die is in the center here, and if the dots would get you past the 12 of the third year, then that means that is the last round of the game. So at the game end, you will count up your score. And you'll add up the number of crystals you have on the crystal tracker, plus the top left number of each of the cards that you have played, the cards that you've summoned. And then from that, you'll subtract the penalties on your bonus action tracker. So that'd be the negative 12 points. And then you'll also subtract five points for every card left unplayed in your hand. Also, there are occasionally cards that'll say you get points at the end of the game in the description, so you'll add those as well. 
and then whoever has the most points for the game wins. That is what gameplay looks like for seasons, but as I mentioned, the bulk of the strategy of seasons are within the cards themselves. So I'll read off a few of these so that you can have an idea of what your strategies may be. The first one is Lewis Gravy. He will let you choose one of your opponents and you'll gain exactly the same number and type of energy tokens as that opponent has in their reserve. So I get two feathers and a water if I play that. The next one is the potion of knowledge. You will sacrifice if I have the potion of knowledge play you would sacrifice that card and you would gain five energy tokens of your choice. The next one is the Amulet of Fire. Draw four power cards, add one to your hand, and discard the other. you are the player with the most crystals, each opponent gives you five crystals. The Empiric Crown. Discard or draw a power card. Gain as many energy tokens as a number of prestige points of the discarded or drawn card. There's all kinds of different things that give you crystals, cost crystals, negative prestige points, some of them uh, give you points at the end of the game if you have the most cards played. There are so many different types of cards that are in seasons and honestly the cards are the reason why this game is so lovely because one, you know, even though the game is complex, each card has its instructions written on it, so you don't have to memorize cards. And then also, there's just so many cards, and usually in a game, you're only playing, you know, 9 to 15-ish cards. And so, you can imagine with all of these cards, all of those cards, you could play so many different games, so many different iterations. A lot of times you don't see the same card twice for like four or five games. Um, and so it's really hard to get bored of seasons because there's just so much variety to it. The meat of the game is in these cards. Um, and as far as we can tell, they've done a really good job kind of balancing the strategy so that there's not one clear way to win. Sometimes people win by having a whole bunch on the crystal tracker, maybe from transmuting a lot. Other times, the winner will have zero on the crystal tracker and will get all of their points through their cards or elsewhere. Now I'm going to go over setup for seasons so that you can set up your game and play. But after that, I'm also going to go over quite a few ways to sort of vary the difficulty level based on what you want. Um, and that includes a couple of the expansions that they have. Alright, so for setup, each player will pick their character board, and they'll get four of these corresponding same color cubes. Two of these cubes will go on your character board, so zero on the summoning track, zero on the bonus action track, and then two of them will go on the crystal counter. Then each player will get their two library tokens, so the two and the three. And then you'll set up the your tracker. So one black cube will go on January 1, 
and then one black cube will go on year one. Then for the dice, you will select whatever number, um, number of players plus one. So if this was a three player game, we'll take out four four of each of these dice, and then the remaining dice can go back in the box. That's sort of another way they have variation, is slight variation in what's on the dice. And then of course you will shuffle your deck, and then deal nine cards to each player. These, of course, will not be their card, but it will be their starting cards for the draft. The remaining cards will be your draw pile. And then you are ready to start with your draft of your nine cards. So set up, it's not too bad. <laughs> Um, and now I'll go over how to vary the difficulty level depending on the group and also how long you've been playing seasons. So if you're new to this game, you want to ease into it, they do have a couple of options in the base game to take it easy. So first off, they have full lists of hand-picked starting cards for each player. So if you want to skip the whole prelude, um, you know, trying to read <laughs> a bunch of different cards at once, um, you can start with those set of nine. Um, pick a different set of nine for each player, of course. And uh, that way you know you'll have a strategy that works together. Another way to make it a little easier is you can remove um, 20 of the cards. So on these cards at the very bottom, they are numbered. So this one's 36 out of 50. You can remove all of the cards over 31 and just play with the first 30 cards that they give you. And those are a little bit simpler, a little less complicated, or easier to get started with. If you want to get a little more difficult, there are lots of options for you. They have two expansion options. Um, I have both of them. They are Path of Destiny and Enchanted Kingdom. I'd say both expansions are worth it, but if you're just gonna get one, I would start with Enchanted Kingdom. I think that was the first expansion that they released, and I prefer it a little bit more because there's a lot of crazy cards to mix things up, especially if you like the transmutation side of the game. I'll go over each of the, what each of the expansions have, and then I'll go over some of the role changes with those expansions. So, Enchanted Kingdom comes with a whole bunch of more cards. And then it comes with some little cardboard pieces to help with those cards. I think more so for fun. They're not <laughs> really the most necessary. Um, they also come with some special abilities that you can use once per game. So each character will have a special ability that they can use in the game. And then it also comes with some extra energy tokens and also a first player token. Path of Destiny, sort of similar, sort of different. It comes with even more cards. <laughs> um, it comes with some more of these special abilities. Uh, and then it gets a little interesting. It comes with a destiny die and some destiny points, which I'll go over in a second. 
and then it also comes with some alternate roll cards that you can rotate into gameplay if you want. So I'll just go over some of the new game mechanics that come with the expansions. So the first one is the special abilities. You'll randomly deal three of these to each of the players, and then before the game starts, they will select one that they want to use for the game, and you'll place it face up. The face up uh, will be the side that has kind of a illustration of the ability. They have very detailed descriptions of the action abilities in the role book. And then, um, how they integrate into the game is after you resolve your die on your turn, you can choose at any point on the turn to flip this over and use its action. And some of these will come with some prestige points. Um, or negative prestige points in this case if you flip it over, if you use the ability. The next thing are some enchantment cards, and these are essentially some rule changes that you can either randomly put into the game, or if you'd like to, you can handpick which rule adjustments you would like. So there are all sorts of different things. Some of them make transmuting more powerful. One of them allows you to see the upcoming cards in the draw pile. Some of them force you to discard cards or sacrifice cards. There's all kinds of different slight rule tweaks that you can integrate into the game. The biggest rule changes that they have are the destiny changes. So there's a couple of alternate rules that integrate this destiny die, and this will integrate into the game after you've all selected your die for the turn. So let's say you're about to execute the actions on your turn, and you decide you know what, I don't want to use this die that I chose, I'm actually going to roll the destiny die and take whatever that gives me. So there's a few different symbols on here. They do have little numbers similar to the standard die and those will just give you crystals. So this one is three, would give you three crystals. It also has uh, miscellaneous <laughs> wild card energy token. So for each question mark, you get any energy token of your choosing. And then the most prominent symbol on here are the moons. And for those moons, you will get destiny tokens. And then the destiny tokens are sort of an alternate way to points. So the player with the most destiny points at the end of the game will get 20 prestige points. So those are all the different expansions. You can kind of customize the game to how you would like it, or also what level of difficulty, what style of gameplay you would like for the group. So in terms of my review of seasons, uh, it's probably apparent <laughs> throughout that I really love this game. I've had it for not a decade, but I feel like we're getting close. Um, maybe I, I've had it like seven years. <laughs> and me and my family and my friends have played this game so, so much. Um, even people who aren't really into board games, you know, you would think, oh, they might not like Seasons because it's very complex. Um, but I've had a pretty good success rate with people still enjoying Seasons, even if they're fresher to the board game scene. <laughs> so yeah, best things about this game, 
extremely replayable. Um, extremely easy instructions on the cards. Even though there's so many different winning strategies, they're all very well balanced. Um, and also the artwork's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, they do a really good job. It's like, I feel like there should be a series of books that this game is based off of because there seems to be so much lore, you know? The Jewel of the Ancients, Eolus's Replicator, the Hourglass of Time, you know, all these different characters and artifacts and things like that. It feels like there's a whole story, there's a whole world behind it. Um, which for me in a game is not the most important thing. I'm usually not one to read the lore or flavor text, um, but I'm definitely glad to have it. It's all very mystical, fantastical, but also cute. <laughs> Those are all the things I love about Seasons. The only thing I don't like about Seasons is the crystal tracker. I think they wanted to be fun and quirky, but they made the crystal tracker uh, very confusing because rather than each of the rows being 10 and you can easily count based on tens, it's um, a little bit of a mess. So actually me and my friends 3D printed quite a few of these pieces. I guess I didn't mention that. This doesn't come with the game. <laughs> Most of these containers do not come with the game. We 3D printed them. We also 3D printed this uh, 10 by 10 tracker so that it's not so messy. <laughs> Other downside of the game, as you probably predicted, um, is it is a little bit complex and it does take quite a bit of time. So this isn't kind the kind of game that you would leave for the end of the night when everyone's sleepy. Um, and it's not necessarily the game I would play if I was in a room of all new board gamers. You have to really want to learn the flow of it, learn what all the different symbols mean. Uh, but once you do, it's easy going. Uh, but it is a little bit of a long game. They say 60 minutes on the box, but uh, I think it's a small percentage of games that I've played that were 60 minutes. <laughs> that might be a that might be a me thing, you know. It could be, but <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Usually it's over an hour at least. Also, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, it sounds like a cool game, but it's kind of expensive not really sure. It is actually free on Board Game Arena. If you haven't tried Board Game Arena before, it's essentially an online tabletop simulator and it's free as long as you're playing with people that are on different Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you can check out Seasons for free there and if you like it, then you can get the real thing. So yes, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!